Hello, everybody. Hope you are doing well. It is my absolute privilege to host tonight's session. My name is Rian Grief, um, and I'll be your host for tonight. And I am the, the founder of Run Forest Run. And Run Forest Run is a group of just normal everyday people that is, has decided to use their talents, their um, God-given gifts um, in a way that benefits those around them and while raising funds towards um, those less fortunate. And the specific people that we're raising funds towards is for Africa, um, so, uh, Africa's largest non-governmental organization. And they've got a 38 year track record um, of coming alongside communities and really just um, really living out what they vision is, uh, which is to see an Africa th that thrives. And we are privileged to just do our part in just running, doing what we can with the little we have. And we are privileged tonight to really have a great conversation with something that's very topical for all the runners here, because as you might or may not know, we have the further challenge during this 2023 year. And what that entails is each one of us is going to go further than we have gone in ever. <laughs> and so myself, I'm going to challenge myself to try and run a 700 kilometer run between the national three peaks here in the UK and try and break the record. Um, so that needs to be done in less than eight days. And then I've got a load of runners that signed up for their anything between a five kilometer and an ultra marathon, which is more than 45K, even 100K. Um, so we've got people from all, all across from beginners to experienced runners saying, I want to go further. I want to do more. And if you want to go further and do more, you need to make sure that you know what fuel you're putting in your body because you can have the best um, Mercedes, Lamborghini, Porsche in, the, in your garage, but if you don't put the right fuel in it, it will go nowhere. So tonight's session is so important for each one of the runners, whether you are a beginner just wanting to live more healthy or whether you're a serious runner that's done this for a long time, but you want to increase um, or make small little tweaks to try and push it further. Tonight is especially for you and I'm very privileged um, to, to have our guest yeah, and I'll introduce her in just a second. I want to just tell you that our tonight's session is going to work. Our guest speaker is going to be um, presenting for a few minutes. And then after that, we're going to have uh, questions and answers. While she's um, presenting, please feel free to use the Q&A section that is available on Zoom. Type up your, type up your messages and I'll make sure to... to ask as many of those to our guest speaker and hopefully answer all the all your questions that you might have. So without further ado, um, I want to introduce our um, guest speaker. She her name is Runel Bosch. She is no um, she's a friend of Run for Us Run. She's been um, part of um, our preparations in the past and she's helped us with our um, nutrition and specifically mine um, in the past and I I really think with a, a background uh, experience that she has there as well as the, uh, work with sports athletes as well as um, um, the track record that she has she'll really um, provide insights that is going to really help your nutrition and your journey 
and to become and live healthier. So Runel, it's a great privilege for me to, to welcome you to the Run For Us Run um, discussion. And I really look forward to, to, to your session tonight. Thank you, Rian, and hello, everyone. I can't see anyone but Rian, so it's a little <laughs> bit daunting, but I can see there are uh, there are quite a few people on this webinar. So thank you very much, and um, Rian, the privilege is all mine. I am humbled um, to be a part of this in any small way. Um, so it is good to be here, and thank you very much for asking me. Um, I hope I can help tonight. Um, do you want, um, am I sharing my slides, or are you sharing the slides? I can share the slides. I've got that um, open. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, yes, what we will cover tonight is eating for energy, the energy plan, um, how to build your performance plate. Um, so, that is maintenance, fueling, protection, and hydration. And this goes for all levels. So um, I believe there is all levels of athletes on here, um, whether you will be running a 5K or your first 21, like Nicoline is. I believe she's on here as well tonight, and she's doing a first 21K tonight or uh, on this challenge or doing the crazy distances that Rian has mentioned um, that he and some others are doing. Um, so um, building your performance plate, maintenance, fueling, protection, and hydration. Those are the four things that you should focus on and um, what that will mean and what it will look like. And then what should you snack on? I'm sorry for the background noises. If anyone hears lots of puppies fighting, you are right. I've got seven puppies. I've tried to quiet them down. But I've got seven puppies in the background, four in the background. So excuse any background noise if you hear a little. Um, then we will look at building some winning behaviors, um, questions on hydration and fueling before and during your run, and then a marathon meal plan for a week, which I have shared with Rian to share with all of you. So we can just move on, Rian. Okay, so the energy plan. Um, I want to show you tonight and teach all of you, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but um, food is really um, your fuel um, every day, whether you are an athlete or not, whether you um, simply sit at a, at a desk and need um, needs energy for, for work, food is really what's going to fuel you. Um, so I want to show you how to proactively fuel your body so that you can meet every day's demands. And not just eat what you are used to or what is right in front of you or what first comes to mind or comes to your eye um, as you go throughout the day. But to um, proactively think about what you should and will be eating throughout the day to be fueling um, your body well. Okay, so each of the meals that you eat every day can positively or negatively affect your energy levels. And that is very, very true. Um, energy levels are a direct um i can't see all the all the slides i don't know there we go in a, in a energy levels your energy levels are directly related to the to how you feel your body um so if you have no energy or low energy it might might not just be a case of not eating enough it might be the, the type of food that you eat as well so we're going to look at that and then it's important that each and every one should have a simple process to build your meals upon, depending on your needs, um, whether you are running or not running at all or walking your 21K. Um, it is important that nutrition and healthy eating should be really simple. It is not um, complicated. And I really want to stress that tonight. Eating healthy and eating well is not complicated and it's not expensive. Okay. All right. So we can go on, um, Rianne. Thank you. Okay, so building your performance plate is a four-part process. Um, it is um, your protein, which will be for maintenance, maintenance of your muscle. Um, whether you know it or not, everyone carries some sort of muscle in their body, um, some sort of muscle mass in their body, and it is important to maintain that 
even if you are a mar marathon runner and you are um you you don't want to be very muscly muscle um is very important to your body so protein to my to maintain that carbs to fuel your energy levels your run um, your veggies, your fruit and your fats for protection and then your water for hydration. So keep these four in mind. We also call them macros, your protein, your carbs, your, um, your veggies, fruits and fats. And then the fourth one is water for hydration. Okay, we can go on. Okay, so firstly, maintenance, the protein is for recovery and rebuilding. With every run, every activity that you do, everyday activities at the office or at home playing with your children um your muscle or muscles are working and working muscles are continually breaking down and building up breaking down and building up the muscle the muscle fibers we need protein for that process okay so um if you are running every day or taking uh, doing um a few hundred kilometers a week or in two weeks um, you are breaking down muscle that needs to recover and for that we need protein so protein good protein sources include chicken turkey beef salmon tuna eggs tofu pumpkin seeds and quinoa for those that do not um, eat meat um, but the, your animal sources will always stay the best sources of protein that you can get um, just to just to note that okay we can go on to the next one your fuel fueling next slide fueling is your carbohydrates um and i want you guys to focus on low gi carbs what does that mean it means um carbs that digest slower than would say for instance um a bagel or white bread or um a cupcake those are all sources of carbs uh, low gi carbs digest slower and um, how much carbs you need is very dependent on your training goal and how efficient your body is at um, using the energy from carbs or from whichever source you you have as as energy uh, for for energy. Okay, so low GI fueling foods or carbs include um, oats, whole grain rice, whole wheat pasta, buckwheat, lentils, sweet potato, quinoa, and bulgur wheat. Okay. We can go on to the next slide, the protection one, that your vegetables, your fruit and your fats, um, all your micronutrients, that's your minerals and your vitamins, comes from veggies and from your fruit. And then the healthy fats, such as olive oil, nuts, seeds, avocado, also butter, um, coconut oil. Um, these are very, very important for hormonal health. Okay, so all of these in one under one big heading are the protectors um and so they are very important to move on to hydration next slide hydration it's important to as you all know to replace your body's water um and the electro uh, lights loss um th that you have lost during your your running or your training through sweating um so how you know exactly how much to replace um, is you do a weigh-in before and after a specific long run. And then for every one kilometer, uh, one kilometer, every one kilogram of weight loss, um, that needs to be replaced with one liter of water and electrolytes. On this slide, it says water. Um, I cover a little bit later on electrolytes. It's very important to um, to replace electrolytes as well and to not overhydrate. Most... Um, most runners, especially in the UK, will overhydrate because they drink too much water, too little electrolytes, and they don't sweat as much as they think they are doing. Okay, so uh, a rough guideline will be to drink uh, 500 milliliters of uh, water two hours before your long run, and then 150 milliliters just before your run. And um, there is no need to drink or eat anything during a run if you run for up to two hours um, after two hours of running about 50 milliliters of water per um, hour and that should include electrolytes the longer you run um, electrolytes such as sports drinks gels um, jelly sweets coke banana all electrolytes okay 
Next slide. Um, okay, so to build your performance plate, types of performance plate that you get is then the fuel, fueling plate, the maintenance plate, and the competition plate. All right, next slide. The fueling plate. All right, so this is for before and after your um, workouts or your long runs, your um, even your daily runs. How should you structure this um, this plate? Is one portion of protein your maintenance, one portion of carbs for fuel, and then one portion of protection, which is your vegetables, your fruit, and healthy fats. You will always see that I um, put vegetables first and then fruit um, second, um, as the the priority is in that order. Go for your vegetables, especially your greens first before reaching for the fruit. Okay, fluid intake is very important with your fueling meal, as your hydration needs are greater before and after training. Okay, then next slide. Your maintenance plate. Um, is that for times when your energy requirements are lower, for instance, on race days or lower intensity training days, that is then one and a half portions of protein, one and a half portions of veggies, fruit and fats. And you will see there are no um, carbs on this day. So it's not a... Um, it's not that carbs are evil. You just need less carbs if you are not training. So uh, fruit and vegetables also, they are also carbs. So on a maintenance day or a rest day, your um, one and a half portions of fruit and veg and then fat added to that will be sufficient um, for the carb needs that you have on that day. All right, next, next um, slide, your competition plate. Okay, so um, very old school thinking um, when I was still at school and um, when I ran at university was to um, carb load for a week before, um, before my long runs or before my competition on a Saturday. And um, then I feel awful on, on the Saturday, um, upset tummy and all that, all that, um, that goes along with, with a carb overload really um so the old way of thinking has been pro proven wrong um two to do three days before a race you can have some more carbs but not usually um not bowls and bowls of pasta so two portions of of carbs then per meal one portion of protein and one portion of veggies or fruit you will see that this um this is a little bit higher, but it's not excessive carbs. Okay. Um, next one. Okay. <clears throat> snacks. I am going to cover snacks, but I want to stress that your meals are absolutely, absolutely essential. Um, with any client that I work with, um, I always stress that your meals should be your first go-to. Um, and only if you have good, if you have um, covered your good meal base on any given day at least two good proper meals um, then add snacks to that um, if needed um, snacks are non-essential they are only this is um, supporting structure for your meals your meals should be your most important basis of fueling your body okay so every snack should have a purpose and snacks and shakes um, never replaces a meal they shouldn't cause blood sugar spikes or insulin spikes, and they shouldn't add unnecessary calories. Okay, so use um, protein-based snacks or maintenance snacks, as we call them, to support your tissue repair, your, um, your recovery, um, to meet your increased protein requirements, um, or to offset dinner, uh, hunger before dinner. So if you really cannot... Um, wait until dinner or until your next meal really have a protein based snack 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 that will um that will just keep you long enough until your next meal all right um great examples of snacks include boiled eggs i love a boiled egg, boiled egg a snack um steak strips or chicken strips uh, nuts greek yogurt edamon beans or a protein shake next slide Okay, then your training snacks, 
um, should have a protein and a carb in. Um, and again, only after two hours of running or training is any, so any form of snack needed. And you should use these strategically. Pre-training, one to two hours before training sessions, such as mid-morning for a lunchtime session or mid-afternoon for after work. So if you, you have a, a long run um, lunchtime, then um, have a, a carb and protein rich snack one to two hours before the training, uh, the, that training session around mid-morning. Or if you are training after work, a long run after work, then um, mid-afternoon-ish. Uh, um, a carb and protein snack. Um, okay, post training is a um, also use snacks post training for um, a quick option to refuel and to repair the muscles um, before your next meal time. So before you get home, um, maybe a protein shake um, with some carbs in, or I'll show some. I'll I'll give some more examples of of good snacks later. Um, examples of these training snacks include um, an open sandwich with smoked salmon or with some uh, slice, uh, sliced chicken on or Greek um, natural yogurt with banana, um, nuts or peanut butter. Okay, next slide. Okay, some questions that I um, got in my previous um, time with you and even after that um, um, from clients were um, the following, um, should I be eating all the time for my run? So I did cover that now in, in the slides here. I'm quickly gonna run over these questions and this might answer some of the questions that you have, um, or I will then answer the questions that you that you sent me. Um, should I be eating the same for all my, my runs? No. Your, um, your snacks or your meals should your fueling should be directly related to the distance that you cover or the time that you spend on the road or in an activity so as i said before two hours of um running or training you don't really need anything during your during that those runs um, and only after after two hours of training um how long after eating a meal should i wait before going to run. Okay, that is really, um, um, it's different for everybody. Um, it's um, very, some people have a very quick digestive system. It also depends on what you've been eating. Um, usually it is about 30 minutes to 45 minutes um, until you're comfortable um, uh, after eating a meal. Um, but again, that's very, very personal and very, um, directly re related to what you've eaten um should you jump into a swimming pool or swim directly after a sunday lunch yes you can that's very um that's an old old wife style that you shouldn't um do it directly after you might just feel a little bit uncomfortable if you run directly after a big meal all right um should i eat before your my early morning run and if so what should i opt for um yes if you are not on a specific um intermittent fasting plan then uh, or training fasted then you should ideally be eating before your um before your morning run or your morning morning training and um the options that i've given before um so uh, um a carb source a protein source and a little bit of fat in that is then very good so for instance um, a small bowl of oats with some blueberries and some peanut butter in would be a great option or um, one egg boiled egg um, on toast it would be a great option as well okay um, what should I definitely avoid eating before a run, a run? again things that um, that are heavy things that digest takes takes longer to digest um, I don't think anyone would run well with a big steak after eating a big steak. So that is again, um, it's it's quite obvious. Um, there's no no big no no um, on this. It is really on what is comfortable for you. Um, so ideally, you should be eating a light meal or a light snack before your run. And then on the morning of a big race, how long before should I eat? 
and what should I opt for? Okay. Um, you should eat at least 45 minutes to an hour before, and then your options um, should the same as for your long runs. Um, be a source of carbs, a source of protein, a light source of protein, and a good fat to sustain your energy for longer. So again, a bowl of oats, great, with some peanut butter in or banana on there, blueberries on there, something in, in that line would be great. Ideally, you should be eating um, the morning of a long run. You should be eating the same thing that you have been training on um, during your, your long runs. The morning of your, your, your race, I mean, you, you should be eating the same thing um, as what you have been eating on your long runs when you have been training so that you're, you don't do anything different or anything new that you're not 100% sure um, would work for you. And um, it also shouldn't contain loads of carbs um, that will um, upset your, your, your whole system or digestive system. So don't, what I'm trying to say is don't go um, and eat completely different on race day than you have been training on. Eat the same thing or train what you eat as well on your, on your long race, long run days. All right. Um, is there any, did we have anything else? Okay. How far or how long can I run without refueling? Two hours. So you can go comfortably go for two hours before starting to um, refuel on um, water, on electrolytes and on fuel, on food, so carbs. Um, what are the best foods to eat on a run to avoid feeling full? So, um, you will all have electrolyte drinks along along the way. You will, will have gels along the way. If you have trained on these, then um, feel welcome to, to use them. If you haven't, be careful, um, especially if you are not one of the ultra marathon runners. I would always recommend to just try it before using it on the day um, so that you don't feel unnecessary nausea or um, discomfort, GI, dis your digestive dis discomfort um, during the runs. Um, things like Coke work well, a banana works well, whatever they um, put next to the road these days um, that, that can all go on race day. I don't recommend that every day, but that can all go um, on race day. And um, after two hours of eating, um, you can start taking some fuel. What are the different options for energy boosting during a run? Obviously, the different energy sources that they have, the gels, electrolyte drinks, um, Coke or bananas, whatever whatever they have there. Um, so the different op options for energy boosting will be different options of food or different options of fueling yourself. Okay. Um, and should I only eat when I feel hungry or should I snack continually during a race? Um, before two hours of, of running or training, you, should, you shouldn't snack and you shouldn't really eat, um, even if you feel hungry. After two hours, you should systematically um, refill yourself um, with electrolytes and water and, um, and fuel about every 45 minutes. Okay. Very little, but every 45 minutes. Then a marathon um, week meal plan that I have asked. There we go. I'm not going to go through there, uh, through um, through this, but I've asked Rian to um, send it over to every one of the people on the school. And um, Rian, you are very welcome to please also send my number. So everyone on the school, um, I am um, more than happy and very privileged to. Um, to free consult you up until the, the race, up until race day. Um, so you're very welcome to text me or phone me and talk about your personal one-on-one -on -one requirements or questions that you may have. Um, and then I think we can open up for questions. Awesome. Thank you. Very yeah, much. maybe maybe I, I, I was wondering if you, um, as we I went through this, I was wondering if you maybe wanted to, comment a little on overhydration and on your on your big race um the previous time 
Um, so along the uh, along the way, you started feeling very unwell, and we at first they trouble troubleshooted. Is that a word? Yeah, yeah. Um, and thought you weren't hydrated enough, but um, but in the end, what we discovered was that he was really actually over overly hydrated and needed some some fuel, some electrolytes. Wasn't that the case? Yeah. Um, and so that was one case because what I normally do is I like to run with a small, um, I've got a water bottle that's nice and soft. So I like to run with that and just sip every now and then. And I didn't take in sufficient electrolytes with the water and something that also culminated in chaos was the fact that I saw oats that morning and I wanted I wanted that for yeah. for breakfast but I never trained with oats yeah. as part of my long runs mm. and my body due to the fact that I was 100 kilometers into a 300 kilometer run just totally rejected that and it took me another 60 70 kilometers to just work that out out of my system before I could really get the electrolytes in me um, to keep me going till the end yes yes okay so so overhydration and, and a, a lack of electrolytes is really a big thing um, and can can really influence your 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 race so any other questions or any questions that is yeah, so there's a there's a few questions coming up but i wanted to um maybe start with a a question that maybe people are afraid of asking is just let's say it is a, a single lady or a single gentleman um i like doesn't like spending time in the kitchen uh, or like doesn't have the budget so ease of ease of use yes. um, together with cost efficiency yes. um, what's your best advice relating to doing stuff um, that doesn't break the break the bank but is still um, healthy yes um, that that is a great question, and I am also on a budget with with four kids and a husband that eats loads. So, um, so I I understand all about that. But healthy eating shouldn't break the bank. Um, and I want to I want to start off by see by by saying um, we should see health, healthy eating as an investment. Okay, so first of all, it is is going to be more expensive than just buying McDonald's. Yes, it is, but um. You can you're gonna be able to buy McDonald's for the next 10 years and maybe on healthy food you're gonna be able to do that for the next 50 years. So mm. um I so I want to start off by saying it's an investment. Um secondly, I want to say that yes, um there is value in variety, but don't break your head over variety. If it's easy for you to do the same thing every single night and it's healthy, rather go for that than breaking your head and the bank over choosing a big variety. Okay, so for instance, um, my every Monday meal and every Thursday meal looks exactly the same in our house. Every Tuesday and every Saturday looks exactly the same in our house and so forth. Okay, um, then just simple practical things um, that I can mention is because usually the protein is quite a big thing. Um, um, or it, it, it breaks your head. It, well, my clients to struggle to get around which protein, what is good. Do I now only buy chicken breast and chicken breast is quite expensive compared to other pieces of chicken. No, you don't need to just buy chicken breast. Um, things like frozen chicken pieces, a great protein source. Things like tinned tuna, a great protein source. Now, can we now... Um, um, have a talk about things, all the added things and things like the the tuna is now in an aluminium aluminium tin can. Yes, we can, um, and they, we can always find um, some sort of something wrong with um, with with a, a food or a food choice. But I'm just trying to give you basics and um, have it as healthy as possible. So, tin tuna, frozen chicken is never a problem. Um, things like um, turkey mince, 
um, is quite inexpensive compared to beef mints and very low in fat or yeah. much lower in fat than, than, than beef mints um, is. Um, then I tell my clients always, there is nothing wrong with frozen vegetables. There is not a single thing wrong with frozen vegetables. In fact, um, they clean it so properly and they uh, make sure to pick frozen veg um, at the exact right time and ripeness. Um, so it is actually better in today's day and age to buy frozen veg than it would be um, to buy fresh and you don't properly wash all the pesticides off um, or you don't buy organic. So it is full of pesticides and that sort of thing. So um, nothing wrong with frozen veg and frozen veg are quite inexpensive um, bags and bags of frozen cauliflower, frozen broccoli in my fridge, frozen Brussels sprouts. Yes, I love Brussels sprouts. Um, those sort of thing. Frozen mixed veg that is very easy to um, pop in a pan with turkey mints and some nice spices, however spicy you like it. Um, on there, that in a wrap, we could eat that every day. Okay, so um, it, it can be very easy. I hope this gives you some sort of a idea or answers answers your question in some sort of a way yes yes mm -hmm. um thank you for that renell and i've got um and one of the questions that came in is how good or bad is coffee um before and after a run and could it lead to dehydration and Yes, it, it can lead to dehydration if you completely overdo caffeine and you don't focus on your water intake. The, um, coffee is not bad and coffee, uh, I'm not going to say coffee is good. It's again dependent on the person. So some people are very, very, very caffeine sensitive. Um, and if that is you, then it is better to just stay away from caffeine. If you feel that you like the taste of coffee, but every time that you drink it, um, your tummy is upset or you have diarrhea or um, then, or you have heart palpitations, some people do, um, then caffeine is really, you're very sensitive to caffeine and you should really limit your caffeine intake. If you don't feel um, anything when you drink a cup of coffee, um, then you're not that sensitive to coffee and it is not um, a problem. I want to say the things that you add to your coffee, that is what is the, um, that is where the, the problems come in. So a cup of black coffee will never do anything, any, anyone wrong. And um, you, you're not likely going to drink 10 cups of black coffee, but it's all the milk and the sugar and the extra stuff that you add to the coffee. So look at the added stuff because that yeah. adds up quite a lot. Um, especially the sugar, especially the, especially the milk. Milk in mm. three cups of coffee um, is almost an overload of carbs on your digestive system. So if you um, maybe feel a little bit upset with caffeine or coffee, maybe first look at taking the milk out before stopping, yes. just stopping the coffee. Um, also, what I want to say is, again, don't go and drink coffee on race day if you've never drank it before. But if you're used to coffee um, and caffeine, absolutely have it. What I say to my clients is always, um, yes, you need your two liters of water a day. And you have seen out now how to replace your water, um, one liter of water for every one kilogram of sweat loss or um, weight loss. Um, but then just in general, for every one cup of coffee a day, drink one cup or one glass of water extra on top of your two liters of water. Um, and then finally, I want to say, do not let coffee be your crutch and replace good meals. Mm -hmm. uh, many people drink coffee instead of eating. Um, and that is one sure fire way to um very low or performance going down yeah. okay yeah um something that i've used instead of coffee especially on a like when i do the very long runs is instead of coffee have the um caffeine um gel gel um, yes. and that just gives gives you that kick as well yes. that you need yes. especially if you run let's for say for example during the night through yes. the night just to give you that kick to yes. get yes. going yes no absolutely i i would just always recommend training on those 
before yes. just taking it. I've never yes. taken a caffeine gel, but I would suspect it can give you quite a kick. Yes. And um, for me, I, personally, I will never drink a coffee before I go on a run because it's just how my system works. I know I'll need the need bathroom in, energy, in, yes. yeah, in a yes. few minutes time. So if, yes. if you're fine with felties, well, <laughs> go for it. But that's, yes. that's not, that's not me. Yes. <laughs> um, so another question relates to the making of eggs. So it's a question about like why boiled eggs and not scrambled eggs. Or no, is, that, is it the no, same? No, like it's just something. So I just make boiled eggs in bulk. Um, so I, I will cook like 30 boiled eggs, keep them in the fridge, and that's just a snack for me. It's an easy snack. So no, there's no, there's absolutely no um, difference between a boiled egg and a scrambled egg. I have scrambled eggs if you like, or have a poached egg if you like. Okay. Um, that was just, um, I, I, I mentioned the boiled egg um, with snacks and it's yeah, yeah. if you walk into a tesco you can buy boiled eggs as a snack so it's just a quick easy mm, one to okay. snack. i understand um then i promise this question doesn't come from me what's <laughs> your what's your um, view on you <laughs> um i i've had this conversation with quite a few people um you is quite high in carbs and i am um, I, I love carbs. I don't um, say carbs is evil, but I the I feel and the research supports that people overload on carbs. The general average person, the average athlete, overloads on carbs, um, and they think their carb needs is, is much higher than it is. So um, yes. Um, Yule is not unhealthy, but I would never recommend it as a substitute for a healthy meal. Yeah. Then we've got some questions that's um, more, I want to say, for the more the, the um, experienced runners from a intermittent fasting running as well as um, a, cal a calorie deficit mm -hmm. um, not necessarily the diet but when mm -hmm. you go into calorie deficit training um, how do you manage how do you manage that um, or, yeah okay um, I'm not 100% sure if you say calorie deficit I'm going to talk about intermittent fasting and then I'm going to ask you what what exactly mm. you mean by the calorie deficit um, so for the purpose of this webinar tonight I don't recommend anyone starting intermittent fasting now before your race day um, if you are on this webinar and after your race day your or the reason why you started training or took up training or took up this challenge was weight loss um then talk to me because i would then definitely definitely inter um, recommend intermittent fasting as a way to support that um and to have your um so basically inter what intermittent fasting does is certain windows of eating certain windows of not eating um and that just forces your body to go into your own fat stores for energy when it doesn't have anything left in the digestive system to burn as energy um, for your race and for the races of everyone on here that's, that don't intermittent fast now before you go on there if you are one of my clients and you are already intermittent fasting continue doing that um, but um, I wouldn't recommend it now that you change anything now before race day so uh, the calorie deficit is that what what exactly the calorie that? deficit is where you burn more calories that you than you take in mm -hmm. um, on a uh, on a daily basis but during specific periods of training mm -hmm. um that that is that is very very difficult to achieve no person can easily um un unless you do 
um, a lot of ultra ultra training, um, Ironman training, or what you're doing at the moment. Um, the average person or the general athlete or the general 21 kaya um, is not going to be able to outburn the what what they take in unless they don't eat anything on a day. Um, so even with intermittent fasting, we are looking at um, lowering the calories or you're eating less calories be, because you're eating uh, during a shorter period of day. Um, but the, it, it's, it's all about the energy sources. So your energy source turns from the carbs in your bloodstream or the carbs, the glycogen in your muscle to the fat stores. Okay. So yeah. the calories in calories out, how much you burn and how much you, um, how much you eat, that is not quite the 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 equation that they thought it was. Um, it's different for everyone. It depends on um, everyone. It depends on your hormonal system. But some people can eat three thousand calories a day. They will never burn three thousand calories a day, but they still lose weight. They still burn fat. It is more about your hormonal system and other factors surrounding that so i hope that answered your question or is it no 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 that that makes that, that makes okay. sense um yeah. i think i've got yeah there's a few questions more one is is there a a quick fire percentage or that you need to take in calories the amount of calories that you'll need for let's say a two hour long run it depends again, person to person. So it depends on your basal metabolic rate, how quickly you burn energy, how quickly you you um, and you can you can work that out. There's a it's called a TDEE calculator. So you can download that for free. Um, TDEE calculator, and you put your gender in there, you put your age in there, you put your weight in there, you put your activity level in there, and then it gives you what is your total daily energy expenditure. Okay, that is the energy that you, your your body needs to function every day, just the okay. normal normal energy. Then if you, um, if you want to lose weight, you need to eat less calories than that. Um, and we say about 500 calories. If you want to put on weight um, or fuel yourself for long runs, you need to eat more than that. Okay, so uh, to answer your question before um, before a race then, then you divide that total by how many um, meals you eat in, in a day. If you eat three meals, you divide that by three and that will give you the amount of calories that you will need before before your, your, your long run. I hope that doesn't confuse anyone. <laughs> Okay. Um, and I will also, after the session, we will share the deck that um, Runel um, took us through together with the, the one week meal plan ahead of race day. Um, and I'll also share the link to this TDE e calculator. Um, it's roughly about 500 calories, but that's very dependent on person to person. Most yes. And their normal activity that. level and things like that. Um, question linked to like what you mentioned this this app is there for us that's all on our phones yeah is there is there an app is there a method for us to be able to track this and not be like totally on the one side you you can be overwhelmed by it or just consumed by it and on the other side you can be totally oblivious Yes. To yes. what you're putting yes. in you. Is there is there um, something that you recommend yes. um, all the athletes yes. to to download maybe? So I do, and I always I always tell my clients as well. So um, we do, you don't need to track your calories and what you eat forever, but it is good to track it for a period of time so that you just as you said now, so that you can become aware of what you're actually putting in your body. So my fitness pal is um, what I recommend to everyone. And it, you can use the free version um, and then just enter your foods in there and it will tell you how much of that was on a daily basis was protein, fat and carbs. And it just increases your awareness. Yeah. Um, 
and then there's um they are very fancy now my, my fitness pal so if you upgrade um to the paid version then you can just take a picture that is amazing and i actually tested it you take a picture of your plate and it will say um we think on your plate is chicken breast brown rice and broccoli is that correct and then it will say how much as well so um i'm very sorry i just want to let the cat out <laughs> I'm, I'm no, 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 that's <laughs> fine <laughs> sorry cool yes i can um while renelle is doing that i can testify i've used my fitness bell two years ago i also i didn't use it for an extended period of time i used it for like a month and a half before my 300k run just also to get myself into the understanding of what i'm putting in my body yeah. and that really helped me because i knew i needed to do whatever i could do ahead of the run to best prepare my body mm -hmm. physically yes mm -hmm. there's mental aspects to it as well but from a physical standpoint i knew i needed to use the resources yes. um, available yes. but uh, also not be consumed with every every little thing that you you no. eat because i think that's the the other side of the coin where people just yeah. lose their lose their joy of life <laughs> yes yes no absolutely but i i i um i think most people don't realize that if we take, for instance, a plate of food that I just said, the mm. 200 gram of chicken breast with um, a handful of brown brown rice and um, two hands full of broccoli, that would not get to even 400 calories. Now, if you had a Big Mac meal, that would easily get you to 900 calories. So it, it just gives you some perspective as mm. to the difference that healthy eating can make in your daily life. Great. Now, um, is there is there such a thing as a cheat day? I um, again, it's personality, different personalities. Some people, some clients, they function best if I tell them if you do this all week and Friday night, you have a cheat meal. Um, for other people, that just sends them over the edge, mm. and um, they they do not like that. They, they don't. So it's different personality types. Personally, I don't like to think of food as rewarding or non-rewarding. I, ju I just like to enjoy my life and enjoy what I eat. So uh, I try to teach that to people as well and try to get people in that same mindset and my children in that same mind mindset that food is really, it, it's, it's really a gift. It can yes. be a gift. So, so just enjoy it in a, in a healthy way. Yeah. yeah. So no, if they, they shouldn't be a cheat day, they can be a cheat meal. Yeah. 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 Um, and something that's also helped me to, realize the importance of what I put in my body is also just from a biblical standpoint, understanding that um, your body is a temple. Your, if, if this body gives up, your rent is up, you, you can't it. make any impact on this, on this world anymore. So that's why the physical activity, the busyness, like what we're doing as, as the runners, we're, we're training that side, but also what you're putting into your body that, also as a as an impact so um, understand that you need to be a, a steward of what yeah. god has given you yeah. um like be be faithful with the the little that you have whether that yeah. is just the five fish and the two loaves or uh, five yeah. loaves and the two fish like yeah. be be faithful with what you've got yeah uh, and you'll see yeah, and you'll see how the the results like yeah. add up yeah yeah, no, absolutely. I, I completely agree, Rian. You, you, um, you say it, but I can't say it any better. I think there was, there was a, um, was there an advertisement, um, a time ago, like a few years ago, with people walking with their hearts outside with a, and then you saw, and, and I think almost was, their counters. Yes, it, it was, it was all about heart health. And mm. it, it was basically along the lines, if you could only see your heart, then you would, um, then you would probably treat it much better. 
Mm. Food, it's and and it's it's really that if you could see your inside and what food can do to you in a good way or in a very bad way, and how all chronic diseases are directly linked to what you put in your mouth, um, then you would you would think twice. Yes, um, Renell, um, is there any closing closing remarks um, from your side? that you want to leave the the runners with no i i i no and yes i <laughs> i um, admire what what you are doing rian and um thank you again for having me this is um this is so inspiring what you guys are doing and how you are inspiring everyone else around you and everyone on here and um even inspiring your two little girls and your wife they are just as inspiring in what they are doing and, and how they are advocating for this but i want to just leave you with this healthy eating is not difficult um and it shouldn't be a heavy and it shouldn't be a burden it should really um it should really liberate you so, and I wish for everyone to feel the difference that um, just small changes, not big changes, small changes, start with small changes and start with habits, change one habit a week and stick to that habit and add to that habit. If you're not drinking water or drinking enough, start with drinking more water. If you're not eating vegetables at all, start with eating vegetables for, with at least, for at least two meals of every day. Start with little habits and you will see how quickly the habits add to, up to a lifestyle and yeah. up to basically your life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then just good luck, everyone. I am, <laughs> I'm, I'm rooting for you. I've got some, some clients that are already or also training and, and are going to do this. So I'm behind you all. Amazing. Uh, thank you very much, Renal. We really appreciate um, your your time, your input, the the effort that was put into um, pulling all of this together for us, and your expertise is, um, really makes a difference. Uh, what I will do after the session is, like we discussed, provide the slides as well as the links to the TDE calculator, the MyFitnessPal, and also Renelle's cell phone number. And like she said, feel free to, to reach out to her if you... So what you have here on the, on the screen is just where you can follow us, follow the journey on our social media, as well as I know there's also people watching this that hasn't signed up to to the challenges yet and now after watching this you've been inspired to to take up the challenge you can just um screenshot the code on there and join join the challenge or you can just make a donation directly towards for africa which we're raising funds for um and know that for every seven pounds raised one kid is being fed um, through the amazing work that For Africa is doing at um, early childhood development centers across Africa. And what they're doing is changing lives. They're changing futures one meal at a time because we know that it's through education that we're breaking cycles. And to get kids at school, um, through these meals this is this is the start this is long-term thinking this is sustainable thinking and what you're um donating towards is um an africa that thrives thank you everyone for for joining really appreciate it and i hope it benefited you make those small changes you will be grateful you've done it you're not going to see it tomorrow you're going to see it in 21 days. You're going to see it three months down the line. And you will be a better person on the other side of it. Not because of how you look, but because of you choosing life, um, real life. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Renel, again. And have a blessed evening. Cheers, Thank everyone. Bye-bye.